to fit my edge banding in here nice and tight, I didn't want to just take a measurement because that's fairly inaccurate. So what I did was make one end fit really flush down there. And I had my edge banding probably a half inch too long. I just kept trimming with scissors until I got really close. And what I ended up with was a small 32nd of an inch gap. And you can't even see it anymore because what I did was cut a strip of masking tape and I stuffed it down in there. So you can't really see the gap anymore. Imagine this is my piano, the pencil here. I want it to come down onto this felt block and slide right into position. So there's a felt block on either side of the piano that when I put this piano in here, I don't have to be exactly center. This will help locate it right to the center. So what's happening right now is there's not enough of an angle to force force it via the weight of the piano down that slope. What I'm gonna do is make new blocks, basically. All right, there's still a little bit of play, but it's very little. Honestly, you could do it without the blocks. <laughs> it does help a little bit, at least, just kind of slot it into position.
All right, so I'm right about to do the glue up for this. This is, for me, the most nerve wracking part. There's not gonna be very good coverage of this. I can't get detail shots and do the glue up in, you know, 15 minutes or whatever when it starts to set up.
in my experience, no matter how accurate you are with anything, you're gonna be a little bit off after glue up. Some boards are gonna stick past other boards, so it helps to go back over it with a plane or a card scraper or something and flush up everything. This is the layout for where the leg is going to live on the piano case. I used masking tape because pencils leave grooves in soft wood like this. I've already finished it with three coats of finish and I do not want to do that anymore. I'm sick of it. So now that I've got all four of these laid out, I need to drill holes for them, but since the legs are still drying from their second coat of finish, I am going to start on the felt dust cover.
There's before, there's after. Definitely makes the lines pop a little bit more, at least in person, maybe not on video. If you're curious what I'm doing here, this is to attach these legs, but temporarily. Put some super glue on here, glue it masking tape to masking tape, and then I can drill my hole from the other side uh, into the leg so that I have a hole that is perfectly aligned between the two. Doesn't really matter if I'm square. The main thing that matters is that this hole goes right through into this hole. They are collinear or in the same exact line. So I was putting this last one in here into the leg that has a crack in it on the end and uh, sure enough it opened up that crack again. Right now I could take the threaded insert out. If I go in the rest of the way, I can't take the threaded insert out. If I needed to, I would have to rebuild the leg basically. What I'm trying to figure out here is where the wood has now moved to now that that crack has opened up. Is that size any smaller or larger than it would be if I were to just take the threaded insert out and drill it to a known size? I think I'm gonna take it out and drill the hole bigger. I run the risk of this not being as strong of a hold as I need it to. But if that's the case and the threaded insert comes out, then I could try epoxy, actually. I just now thought it. so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the threaded insert out. I'm going to expand the hole by another 64th, put the threaded insert back in. Hopefully I can get it all the way in without opening these cracks up any more than they already have opened up. Because the cracks are not that deep and they're not that, they don't run all the way through the leg right now. So I don't want those cracks to open up any more than they already are. Um, that's one of the main things. So I'm gonna try that. explosion yet.
it looks really low to the ground, but it's it's actually it's actually really good, right? Oh yeah. 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 That's <laughs> I'm re I'm really, really pleased with that. Try it with the dust cover on. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. This is... One of the weird things is like, some of it you have a pretty good idea of what your end result is gonna look like. And I could kind of tell, like as I was going, once I got the case done and I got it all finished and everything, I kind of knew that's what it was going to look like. But it's so hard to tell because I never attached the legs beforehand what it was going to look like once the legs were attached. It's time to take it inside. So I know what you're probably thinking, why'd you do that? Um, and I ask myself the same thing every time I hit record to record that song. Um, this is not something I'm comfortable with. This was very scary for me to do, and I knew it was going to turn out bad, and that's kind of the point. I've been playing piano for about 10 months now, roughly, and this is my second song ever. I love playing piano, and I love singing, but not really for other people or around other people. I do you know, sing occasionally around people I'm comfortable with, like family and friends, but it's not something I feel like I'm good enough at to warrant making them listen to like I just made you listen to me. The reason I want to show you this is, well, one, I have to play piano at the end of a video where I basically build a piano. 
it's the satisfying conclusion to the video. But also, I want to make a point here. So, I know some stuff that is required to make a song sound good. I know that you need generally a condenser microphone and an audio interface connected with an XLR cable, and then you record the piano and the and the at least in this case of a digital piano, you record the piano separate from your vocals so you can mix and master and make it all sound good, add some reverb, all this stuff in a program called a DAW. I don't know how to use a DAW, I don't have a condenser microphone, and I don't have an audio interface or an XLR cable. And I'm not going to spend 30 or 40 or 50 plus hours learning how to use a DAW or hundreds of dollars, 200 plus dollars, buying all of that equipment that I would use, but it's not at the top of my list for equipment that I need. I did this anyways because I enjoy it and I get all I need out of playing piano and singing from the process, regardless of the end product. So let me give an example. Let's say you want to start woodworking and you want to make tables and chairs and all that stuff. You think, oh, I need a, a table saw. I don't have the space or the money for a table saw. That's the same thing as me going and buying all of this equipment that I don't actually need. When I have a microphone, I have two speakers that can pump the sound of the piano into that microphone, and I have my voice, which I can sing right into the microphone. I have the knowledge of not doing any editing to the actual song, which is what I did. All I did for that song, in terms of editing, was adjust the volume. Let's say you want to start woodworking. You can get a pocket knife you have laying around the house and some chunks of 2 by 4 out of a dumpster or maybe you have those laying around too and carve some chess pieces out of that. And you can learn, do I like the tedium and the boredom of sitting here and get, getting my hands rough and maybe accidentally cutting myself from time to time and and sometimes I mess up and the chunk flies off that I need. Then you learn how to repair that. Maybe you glue the piece back on and then maybe you, you know, you've know, you got to sand it and you finish it and stain it and all this stuff. You learn a lot of the processes of woodworking that are germane to the whole process. They may not be making tables and chairs and they may not you may not end up with a product that you care about or an object that you actually want. But you'll still learn if you enjoy the process, which is far more important than the product. Because if you just want some tables and chairs, it's gonna be much more efficient if you don't like woodworking to just go buy some tables and chairs. It's gonna be, it's gonna save you time for the things you really do enjoy, and it's gonna save you money for the things you really do enjoy. But if you love the process, then I would say you should definitely pursue. I mean, if you just enjoy the product, that's fine too. There's no harm in that at all. But I would argue that you will enjoy something whether you enjoy the end result or not. Just like with the song that I recorded and you listened to, I enjoy playing piano and singing far more than I enjoy the product of my playing and singing. If you take one thing from this, you can do a lot more with a lot less than you think.